The last thing I'd like to talk to you about in this topic about uh, waves is interference. Now interference is when two waves meet, they might actually interfere with each other. It's a bit circular to talk about a definition within its own, uh, well, with, to talk about a term within its own definition. But let's just state this. This isn't really a definition of it, but it's at least a situation. So when two waves meet, they can interfere with each other. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. With each other. So, if I have two waves meeting, well, I'll show you the two extreme examples. Because, by the way, when uh, things are interfering, it can be completely constructive interference. We can have completely destructive interference, and we can have anything in the middle. So I'm going to show you the two extreme examples. So if we have constructive interference, what happens then? If we have fully constructive interference, well, here's an example. What if I have a little wave going like this? Whoa. Like maybe this is in a string or something like that. And then I also have another wave. Maybe I'll draw it in blue. Whoa. And I have these two waves are on the same string. I'm just trying to show you two different colors here, but one's coming this way, and the blue one goes this way. Okay, so like they're on a collision course. This could be on a jump rope. You know, if I take a long rope and I sort of, I make an oscillation this way and I can make a wave travel. Keep in mind that would be a uh, transverse wave because the oscillation goes up and down and yet the wave would travel 90 degrees to that. But this you can do with a string or a rope, right? You just have one person at one end of a rope and the other person at the other and you each at the same time, let's say, you make a little wave. So I make one going this way, my friend makes one going this way. And what happens when they collide? Well, when these two meet, if they're exactly the same size and they're lined up really nice, we can have pure constructive interference, which means this one right here, what will happen is this, that my white one wants to do this and my blue one also wants to do this because you know when they're lined up, they're superimposed over each other. And the result is at every point, all you have to do is add up the height of the wave. Uh, each of the waves. So here I would add up this height plus this height. So that means it would actually go twice as high. So that means it would do something like this right as they meet. And then of course after they meet what would happen? Well then we have the same situation where afterwards we have this wave this way and we have this wave this way. And this one still goes this way and this one still goes that way. So this is an example of sort of before, during, and after. But these two waves will actually just run right through each other. The interesting thing happens right in the middle. We call it constructive because if you look, it sort of, it builds upon itself. It makes the wave bigger than it otherwise would have been. So that's pure constructive. We can also have destructive. Well, by the opposite. So maybe I have a wave like this. Maybe it goes like this. Whoa. And then over here, I have a wave that goes like this. So let's assume they're the same height and everything. They're moving in opposite directions again, except this one's opposite like this. When these two meet, then I've got, you know, my dotted line. This is what this white wave wants to do. And this blue wave wants to do this. Oops, they're supposed to be symmetric. So what happens in reality? Well, at every point, I add up this value and subtract that value. So in other words, it's going to be completely destructive. So right as they meet, the wave will actually go whoo, silent, so to speak, or not silent, but it won't move. And then of course, they'll pass right through each other. So that means in the end, what do we have? Well, whoops, and there goes my little blue chalk. It actually broke into a lot of pieces, but that's okay. Um, so then afterwards, it goes like this, and my white one just passes right through. My white one goes this way, and my blue one goes this way. So that's an example of full destructive interference and here we had full-on constructive interference. But I don't want you to think that these are the only two situations. You can have any combination of the two. So the key thing here is to just think about, uh, well, if they're constructing or destructing, so to speak. But when you have interference, it just means 
add up all the different points and see what you get. Now we can have something else too. We can have um, interference in this case. What if we have light, let's say, or even a wave or something like that. But if we have light, let's say, and it's going through a little slit, so a little hole here. The so light's going through some sort of opening here. So the light goes in through this opening. And what happens is, if we project it onto a screen, the light here can actually, well, it can actually diffract. The light can actually spread out, like we just learned about. So let's say I'm looking at this point right here. So that means the light that goes, you know, from this top part may go, you know, that distance, whereas the light from this part, it goes that distance. And the key thing to keep in mind is this. The light from the top part didn't have to travel quite as far as the light from the bottom part. In fact, if these were parallel rays, because a lot of times they're drawn as parallel, because this thing we're going to assume it's really, really far away. So then we would actually assume that these two things are actually parallel. We would actually assume uh, they do something like this and something like this right here. And we would say, well, then we have a... Uh, actually, you know what? I'll just keep it the way I had it. So let's say we have it like this and like this. Forget about the parallel part. It's actually not so important. Um, if we look at this then, Look at the distance that this one traveled compared to that one traveled. There is a difference in path. And in fact, I can sort of draw it right here. So this, that distance right there, that's how much further this lower one has to go than that one in order to get to that point. So we call this right here, we call that the path difference because it had to go farther. And the key thing is this, and this is actually on your data booklet now. So if the path difference, if it equals, so maybe I'll say if. So if path difference equals n lambda, then we have constructive interference. Now we better define what this means. Okay, so this one right here though, this is important here, is that if the path difference, in other words, if one of them had to go uh, n times lambda more than the other one, then these two things are going to be in this kind of situation where they're going to interfere constructively and make things, well, if this was the light, the light would be brighter because this then would be a brightness of the light. So this would be a point right here where this would be really bright light. Now, lambda is the wavelength and n is just some integer. It's just some number. So n is going to be, for example, 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or whatever. So it's going to be a positive value, and it's going to be either like 1, 2, 3, whatever. In other words, as long as the path difference is a multiple of the wavelength, then you're going to have constructive interference. And we also have the opposite. So if the path difference... So this time, what if we have it equal to n plus 1 half times lambda? So this is another situation. If the path difference is basically, it's not just a, a multiple, it's actually a half multiple. So this would be, again, n would be 1. So this would be like 1.5 or 2.5 or 3.5. In other words, if it's a half multiple of this, uh, wavelength, then we have what's called destructive interference. So these are the two situations here that you might want to deal with. So on an exam question or something like that, uh, these are the things to keep in mind. Oops, I'm writing really bad today. So this right here, this is what you keep in mind. You take a look at the path difference and see, is the path difference a multiple of the wavelength? If so, constructive interference. You have this happening where it grows, it does more. Whereas if the path difference is, let's say, 1.5 lambda or 2.5 or 3.5 or 4.5 lambda, that's what adding the half does, then you have destructive interference. That means at that point, let's say the path difference here was, let's say, 1.5 lambda. In other words, this little bit right here was 1.5 what the wavelength is then at this point, you'd have no light, you'd have a dark spot. So in other words, you could then scan along and then see what you get. You could actually get bright spots in the middle, and then darker spots, then bright spots, and darker spots, and bright spots. So this is actually what light does when you have 
uh, what's you know, called a single slit diffraction. Right? So that's something that you can actually look at. Now we go into this in more detail in one of the um, advanced, uh, not advanced, uh, one of the additional higher level topics. So the one about si uh, wave phenomena. So that actually that's one of the physics SL options. It's called sight and wave phenomena. And that's actually option A, I think it is. So in that one, we go into this a little bit more detail. Basically, this is the underlying idea behind it, though, is as long as your path difference is either a multiple of the wavelength or a half multiple of the wavelength, you could say, then you either have constructive or destructive. You could have anything in the middle, and then you'll have you know, a combination of destructive and uh, constructive and destructive. So remember, these are the two extremes here. But that's how interference works, and that's the end of what we need to look at for uh, topic four.